lecture, we'll talk about financial management. And it's the area where finance and strategy are perhaps most fully integrated because so many of the global impacts because of regulation and economic differences, foreign exchange rate differences and that sort of thing, tax rate differences, impact the financial performance with basically equivalent outcomes in various marketplaces, but because of the various financial parameters, you might get low cost in one place versus another. This is one area where financial management, international competition from a financial management perspective, becomes so important. First, let me describe an important concept, a core concept in this area, and that is called product profit sanctuaries. Those are countries where, or marketplaces, international markets, where companies are very strongly entrenched. They, make, they have a very good market. They have a strong market share. They're in a very good, perhaps low cost position or focused differentiation position, very strong in one country. Their competition has already essentially been, um, been, been fought off and they're very strongly entrenched. They make a lot of profit. Because of that, they can do cross-market subsidy, subsidization. That is, they can use some of that profit to take a little bit more risk and reduce perhaps their expectations of profit in other markets in order to establish their position. This is a very strong competitive weapon. On this chart, for example, the ones that are sort of like a maroon tan or red color are um, profit sanctuaries, and the ones that are purplish are more existing markets that they're trying to enter. So you can see if you have a really strong profit, profit sanctuary, usually the domestic market is one, almost always, but there might be other markets where you're extremely strong as well. You can use some of those profits to fund investments in these other countries, country B, country C, country D, etc., as is described in this situation. So what that means is you have financial stability, financial strength to hold up to competition. When you enter the market, you'll be attacked by local domestic, in, in that particular country, the domestic competitors. But you can hold back some of that because you have this profit strength in your other countries. In your, um, in your profit sanctuary countries. And so you can see that you might have um, many different or a few different profit sanctuaries and you want to take some of those and use some of that profit to enter a new market, hopefully winning off the competition in that marketplace and from that perspective creating a new profit sanctuary and gradually getting a foothold it's almost like you're, you're, you're going out and you're getting a foothold in a certain position and then you're strengthening and consolidating that spot. And eventually, if you become a profit sanctuary, you can use that also as a launching pad to go to the next marketplace and then the next marketplace and then the next part marketplace, etc. Now, this leads to an important um, concept in, uh, in strategy which has, uh, it's not considered a fair practice and that's called dumping. If you think about it, if you have a strong profit sanctuary and you want to enter a new marketplace, it is possible that you could actually sell your product from less than cost. That is, it's less than it costs you to, to make it and distribute it because you are making so much profit in your local market. So you can establish a market share by essentially subsidizing that foreign market more than just in investment, but even in your profit and loss statement. This is called dumping. Um, it came up in the 80s. Mostly, it often occurs when there's foreign exchange shifts. So a, a country is in a strong position. They're trying to enter a new market. In that time, Japan was trying to enter um, into the U.S. market and was entering the U.S. market. And as the yen increased its strength, they became less profitable. And typically, they would need to have raised their, rice, their prices on what was being exported to the U.S. But they did not want to do that because they would lose market share and they felt that the yen would again lower in its in exchange rate. So they maintained low pricing in the U.S. even though it was at a lower price than it actually cost them to manufacture and distribute it. And that was a dumping strategy and so you hear about that um, on, um, in the business press occasionally. And it becomes a problem because in many economies it's considered illegal. It's not a fair trade practice and it's not considered a uh, fair for like the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and the like. But at the same time, because interest rates, uh, because exchange rates fluctuate, you can have situations where you are, in a sense, forced to do that because if you raise your prices, you'll lose your market share just because your currency changed. And so companies really struggle sometimes 
um, with that particular problem. And the way that it's dealt with is by starting to manufacture within the domestic country, which is one of the reasons why the Japanese automobile manufacturers started manufacturing in the U.S. They did it for many reasons. But one is that if you're manufacturing in the U.S., you're less susceptible to foreign exchange risk and foreign exchange risk has a pricing problem, but it also has this limit, whereas if you get to the point where you actually are dumping in order to compete, then you start to have non-fair trade practices and violate some of these international treaties. So this becomes a, quite a complex area. And you can see that those of you that are interested in finance and accounting, there's a, lots of very interesting problems that continue to develop and evolve. This is not a once and done thing. The global economy is always changing and shifting in terms of its interest, in terms of its exchange rates, political and economic conditions, and therefore there's always room to find and identify strategic opportunities along all of these fronts. One of the reasons that it's so interesting. So you can see that um, sometimes you can def defend against somebody also by using a profit sanctuary. Somebody that comes in and tries to fight you off, you might um, you might be able to use. Some of, the some of the subsidies from your, profit, some of, from your profit sanctuary to allow you to do a price action in the country where the local domestic competition is trying to throw you out. So it's got a, an offensive strategy we talked about earlier, but it also has uh, defensive elements, all of which makes it very interesting as organizations can use their financial position if they have really good uh, financial and accounting uh, skills and expertise in the back office they could make some really interesting and good strategic moves in order to make sure that they have their strategy is well positioned in multiple geographic markets. That's one of the things that we think about financial positioning, financial um, situation can be extremely um, good in terms of being able to position an organization. And oftentimes the big global players realize this and they don't want to start a war of cross subsidization across different countries where they can become their position and the positions they have strong profit sanctuaries versus another can be significantly weakened. So there becomes a test of whose who's positioning of profit sanctuaries versus entry markets, how whose position is stronger, and that can be a very risky proposition to open up for com competition. And so usually, oftentimes, is a lazy fair kind of thing. You just sort of sit back and don't want to open that can of worms. In our last lecture in this international piece, we'll talk about, in the next lecture, we'll talk about uh, entering emerging markets, which has its own set of risks and its own set of, uh, of potentials, obviously. When you're entering markets that aren't fully developed, they're growing fast, perhaps, but at the same time, the population is um, relatively poor. So it might, it has a, you have a harder time, perhaps, having a price, having a strong pricing position. But at the same time, future growth is in those markets. So we'll talk about that in our last lecture, and that will be uh, what we talk about next.